want to be looking at verse 5 and to use verse 5 as the key verse for our little discussion here on this night. Um, verse 5 is special because in fact in verse 5 we notice uh, a meeting on the mount. I will be talking a little bit more before we get deep into that. But in this meeting we have invites or we have guests from different department that is not listed in many other scriptures. Very rare in a meeting you would find visitors from above, which is from heaven. Then you would have visitors from the earth, namely Peter, James, John, and Jesus. And notice carefully, we have visitors here from the dead. That is why verse 5, uh, in our discussion means so much to me. Let me go back from uh, verse 1 of Matthew 17 and do what I would describe as a step-by-step -step process. And uh, it would say in, in verse 1, After six days, After Six days, probably you could repeat that with me, even with a clapping of the hand Alleluia. and give a shout to the Lord. Alleluia. After six, six days. days. Now, mm. what that does mean is that Jesus has been discussing with his disciples from the previous chapters, mm -hmm. especially chapter 16. Jesus has been telling his disciples about some things for the future, especially what was going to happen to him. Jesus mm -hmm. told them that the chief priests, the rabbis, the people, the ministers, was going to treat him disgracefully. Jesus told them that they are going to bring him to shame. Jesus told them that they are going to beat him, shame him, kill him, mm. bury him, but then to highlight it, Jesus told them that, in fact, within three days, mm -hmm. he would be coming back kicking and laughing and he would be back um, mm. on the land. Now, Peter missed the highlight. Peter missed the bit where Jesus um, talks about the joy of his coming back. Mm. Peter immediately engage upon Jesus, suffering, his beating, his shame, shame and so on. And so Peter, according to what Matthew explained to us, Peter took Jesus and began to rebuke him. In other words, come on Jesus, that is far from you. Who can beat you? Who can put you to shame? Peter was angling Jesus as if he thought he knew more than Jesus. Mm. It is amazing that at this time, <laughs> although Peter was specially selected oh, yeah. to be up on the mountain with Jesus, but Jesus' ad was to put the boy in his place. Mm -hmm. Notice Jesus says to him, get behind me. And in fact, Jesus named him. See. Could all of you shout the name with me? <laughs> Jesus says to him, get, get behind me. Who? Satan. 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 Come on, say it with me. Satan. Get behind me, Satan. Satan. Come on, do it again. Say, get, get behind, behind me, me, Satan. Yes. Bless the Praise Lord. God. See, mm. Jesus uh, was um, one of them people that he could tell the truth. He could yeah. tell anybody the truth. Now, after Jesus was able to move through that bit from chapter 16, uh, with his disciples. Now he step into the beginning of chapter 17. And Matthew says this to us. After six days, mm -hmm. what Matthew was saying is that this discussion with Jesus and the disciples was six days past. Yeah. When you do your personal discussion, you would understand that it seems to me as if at this point Jesus had a break. For six days, Matthew 
have nothing to write. He couldn't write about healing. He couldn't write about miracles. He couldn't write about feeding people. For six days, it seems as if Jesus moved aside and nothing was done. Now then, six days is passed, mm -hmm. and Matthew brings us back to the point um, where he is now showing us that Jesus select a few important people with him. And according to Matthew, he led them upon the mountain. Um, sometimes in theolo uh, a theological decision, a uh, discussion, um, some people would be trying to pinpoint the mountain, questioning, is it Mount Mariah, is it Mount Zion, uh, is it Mount Olive, or uh, some other mountain. That to me doesn't matter. It doesn't matter which of the mountain. But what we can agree on and decide on as facts of the matter is that Jesus went up on the mountain with his selected few. Now look here. On the mountain, Jesus must have positioned himself for prayer. <clears throat> if I have more time, I would give you my personal testimony about what praying in the bush means. Because what I know is that sincere praying in the bush, of course many of you don't have that experience, but sincere praying in the bush sometimes brings more conviction than what you do in the temple. I have a personal experience on that. I couldn't touch it tonight. But as soon as they get up on the mountain, Jesus positioned himself for prayer. Now, this is why, to me, verse 5 means so much. In this um, discussion, um, voices from heaven was there. Um, the witnesses that Jesus select uh, to take note of this, namely Peter, James, and John was there. Jesus was there. And amazingly, we have two extremely important men from the Old Testament, Elijah and uh, Moses. Well, you know, as well as I do, that Moses was responsible for issuing the law and that Israel and others would have to obey the law. Um, Elijah or Elias, as some uh, New Testament writer would name him, was one of the prophets of old that was highly respected. Now, these men was engaged in discussion, and again the question is asked, what were they discussing? What were they talking about? Now, in fact, the truth of the matter, uh, they were really discussing what's going to happen to Jesus. They were telling Jesus a little bit about death. Now, you know as well as I do that the death of Eliza was so special until today he is one of the persons that no one can find his grave or his tomb. Moses also, his death was so unique uh, that man was not allowed to bury Moses. God did that himself. Mm -hmm. What happens to these two men was that they know something about death. Mm -hmm. And so they were brought back by God just to talk to Jesus, uh, being on the human side, so as to prepare him for <clears throat> what was coming. While they were there in this discussion, something spectacular happened. Mm -hmm. There was a cloud. In mm -hmm. fact, Matthew says this was a bright. shining, a bright cloud. Now, you know, as well as I do that in the New Testament, we would have sometimes dark clouds. Mm -hmm. I remember preaching a message once um, about what happens at the death of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I talk about darkness at noon. But when the children of Israel were being led by God, there were days when he would provide dark clouds mm -hmm. to slow down the enemy behind his chosen. And there were days when he would provide light cloud mm -hmm. to provide greater light mm -hmm. for his travelers guiding them 
across the Red Sea. On the mountain, um, something happens. Um, the face of Jesus Christ mm. shone, um, in fact, probably brighter than the sun. He was lit. It, this was bright. The face of Jesus, the witnesses, God moved in such a special way that he didn't want Jesus to tell the story himself when it uh, get back to the pine for human beings to hear about it. Jesus wanted witnesses. Yes. He wanted human beings to tell human beings. Mm -hmm. And so he had these three men there witnessing. When they saw the brightness mm -hmm. of Jesus, the shining light, um, in fact, uh, Peter was moved. And you know Peter, he jumped to conclusion. He didn't wait. In fact, at this point, I have a, a personal testimony. I know why God had was to come in. Um, my testimony here is that uh, not long ago, I sat and the person moved beside me and borrowed a piece of my tool. I didn't see the tool, but the person did something with the tool and I heard the sound and I simply says, oh, that's my tool. And the person says, oh, wow, uh, you need to leave this for me in your will when you go. <laughs> and before I was able to say anything, my wife wrapped in and she says, well, how do you know he's going to die before you? Well, of course, we have fun out of it. Um, this was exactly what happens up on the mountain. Yeah. Is that with this type of a transfiguration, Peter rushed on and Peter says, uh, it's good for us to be here. Lord, this is nice, man. Mm -hmm. and then he introduced to Jesus, let us make three tabernacles, one for Moses, one for Elijah, and one for you. At this time, God could not wait on Jesus to answer. God had was to step in yes. himself. This. God says, no, look here. This is, now, this voice that they heard, it was wrapped up in a cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, they didn't see anyone, but they heard this unique uh, speaking, this voice saying, and who you think was speaking? The I am that I am Amen. who sent you. Mm -hmm. And Jesus, uh, God said, this is my beloved son. Mm -hmm. Here is the main point. Mm -hmm. Not only that we should mm -hmm. hear him, mm -hmm. but we should obey him. Mm -hmm. That is, we must pay now more attention, uh, especially in these days when the world is confused. We live in a time now when some of the most clever, some of the most sensitive, some of the most educated, some of the most bold people on earth, male and female, are confused. Mm -hmm. They are wandering and here and there, um, not knowing what to do. This was where God says, this is my beloved son. And not only that, God told them, look, um, I am pleased with them. Mm, and you. because I am pleased with them, all you have to do so to bring some happiness to yourself, to bring some joy to yourself, yes. for you to be able to uh, monitor your way through this life and to go to bed and have second peace, God would say, look, just hear him mm -hmm. and obey him. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, means so much. In fact, I would love for us to um, just take another verse of a song here. It says, um, Oh, I want to see him and to look upon his face. Yes. Um, let's see if we can do that together while we are clapping our, our hands. Oh. oh, I want to see him just to look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, then he lit my voice. Oh, cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Oh, I want to see him, just to look upon his face. Oh, fair to sing forever, of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, 
is open, and I'm home at last, ever to rejoice. I wish we have more time for what I call Bible discussion. I love to be in discussion where we can be just having people sharing. It was not like that tonight, but I'm going to leave you with this portion of scripture. I'm going to suggest that you take it and you read it and you have your personal devotion and that you pay special attention to the key verse, which to me is verse 5, and take note of the meeting point. And you will understand that sometimes when you assemble yourself in family prayer, who to tell? Heaven may draw near. You mm. can never tell. But what is in this and what I'm leaving with you is that you must listen to Jesus. Mm. You must hear what Jesus says and you must obey him. I know sometimes different spirits and different people will invite you and tell you God says and this says and that. But what God wants you to do through Jesus Christ is listed in the Bible. Will you read the Bible and will you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you direction. Wednesday night prayer meeting and Bible discussion to me is one of the highlight in moving between me and the saints in Luton. I want you to accept that until we are able to do some more. And um, if we can join in this final song um, and, and, and do this together, it says, Jesus paid it all. And notice, all to him I hold. I hold. Um, sin had left. Sin. Oh left. my gosh, we don't have time here to talk about sin. Mm, but left. sin has left. Crimson, uh, crimson stain. Oh. Jesus washes them whiter than snow. Come on, let's sing this together. Jesus paid it all. all. To him I owe Sin has left the crimson stain He washed in white as snow Jesus paid it all Position yourself at this moment for prayer. Most merciful God, most compassionate God, the Holy One, the Creator of the heaven and of the earth, thank you for this portion of scripture being revealed to us in a new way here and tonight. Righteous Father, I know you to be the God of gods. Yes, Lord. I know you to be the creator of everything that mm -hmm. is in heaven, that is upon the earth, and that is in the waters below the earth. You are the God that is above gods. Yes. I draw your attention into the trouble that mankind is, is facing God. on this earth. Yes, Lord. Righteous Father, nothing is new to you, mm. but I'm asking for spiritual direction. Yes, Lord. Righteous yes, Lord. Father, I am asking for divine covering yes, uh, for your people, for them and to them that trust you, call upon you, wait upon you. I pray tonight for those who are passing through bereavement, mm. Here, there, and everywhere, yes, in every Lord. part of the world. Yes, I pray for spiritual directions for government, yes, for police officers, yes, for medical yes, uh, science, uh, for local authorities, mm. for your church, mm. people on the street. I pray for spiritual directions. Righteous Father, may your people 
enjoy peace of mind. Yes, Lord. May your people lay down and rest. You are the peace. You promise that uh, my peace mm. I leave with you. Yes, Lord. My peace I give, give unto you. you. Not. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. May I say to you, my brothers and sisters, and all those of you that are listening, Enjoy the peace of God. Mm. Let not your heart be troubled. Be not afraid. God bless you. Amen. Amen.